let's bring in uh, INEC, uh, you know, National Commissioner for Information and Voter Education. Uh, what exactly the INEC's uh, position is on the situation in Nigeria's ruling party. Thank you for joining us on Newsnight tonight. Well, let's start by asking you uh, exactly what is INEC's position on the sudden change in leadership within uh, the APC and uh, this 21-day notice notice for the convention or notice for uh, the neck what exactly is it help us understand well uh, on the eighth day of uh, march uh, 2022 uh, the apc wrote to the commission intimating the commission of an emergency meeting of the national executive committee of the of the party and then uh, and also intimating the commission that that emergency meeting has been fixed for Thursday, uh, 17th March, uh, 2022, at 11 a.m. from, and that it was going to be a virtual meeting. Uh, when we received this particular letter, we responded to the said letter, and we drew the attention of the party uh, to the fact that the letter that was forwarded to the Independent National Electoral Commission was not signed by the National Secretary or and the National um, uh, uh, by the national chairman and national secretary of the of, of the party, uh, which goes contrary to um, uh, the regulations and guidelines for the party party operations in uh, 1918 um, uh, uh, that was um, uh, drafted by the Independent National Electoral Commission. And the regulation says that in official correspondences to the INEC, uh, the national chairman and the national secretary must sign. So we drew the attention uh, to this particular fact. We also drew the attention to the fact that if the party is going to have any change or make any change in its governance structure, it must give the Independent National Electoral Commission a 21 days a notice of its intention to do that. But if it is not going to make any change in its governance structure, uh, what is required to do is to get another letter to the commission signed by the national chairman and the national secretary of the political party um, uh, 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 intimating us of their virtual meeting. Now, if you look at section 222 of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, before any association is registered, that association must uh, uh, forward to the independent national electoral commission, the name and uh, uh, personal particulars of members of his national executive committee. And they must also forward the specimen signature of the national chairman and national secretary. Uh, so those who signed the letter forwarded to the Independent National Electoral Commission on the 8th day of March do not have their specimen signature uh, domiciled with the Independent National Electoral Commission. It, therefore, in relation to our docket, we do not know those who signed that particular letter. And that was what we drew the attention of the, of the, of the APC to. Now, somebody is trying to confuse, or some people are confusing, our response to the letter relating to this meeting and the issue of the national convention of the APC slated for the 26th day of March. In relation to that one, when the APC fixed their convention for the 26th day of February, uh, 2022, they gave us the notice. When they shifted the convention to the 26th day of March, we, they wrote to us telling us that they have shifted their convention to the 26th day of March. So that is a completely different issue from the issue relating to the meeting uh, uh, of which we responded to. Uh, so that's just the issue. Uh, thank you for clarifying, Mr. Festo Sokoye. So you're saying what uh, INEC has a problem with is the NEC meeting and the notification sent to you because you do not have the signatures of those people who did that. But the APC has been responding and they said uh, there wasn't really a change of guard per se. It was just a delegation of duty because uh, the acting chairman had to go out on for a medical checkup, and so his vice chair took over. I wonder what your response is to that. But my major question to you is, what is the implication of this? If INEC is saying we do not recognize these people, are you saying that neck meeting should not hold? Now, the party involved is aware that there are means and methods of communicating uh, to the Independent National Electoral Commission. And they have been very, very regular. They have been very, very consistent in relation uh, to its means of communication to the Independent National Electoral Commission. If the national chairman of the party is proceeding on, medic on, uh, uh, on leave on medical grounds, the party knows that 
the independent national electoral commission has to be notified and that that notification will enable us to have the specimen signature of whoever is acting in our docket because we cannot just recognize any individual writing to the commission uh, and, um, uh, and making demands on the commission or notifying the commission of certain things so what we are saying is that that particular notification there was no formal notification uh, to the independent national electoral commission to the effect that the national chairman of the party was proceeding on vacation and if he's proceeding on vacation the commission must be notified uh, because in our communications in in article one one three of the um regulations and guidelines for the conduct of political party operations it is the national chairman and the national secretary that must jointly sign every letter that comes to the commission and this has not taken place so we are not aware that there has been any change in terms of leadership in terms of anybody acting on behalf of the national chairman of the apc and that's what the issues are what the issue is all about all right, let's uh, bring in our other guests. Uh, Dr. Cairo Jobo is here with us in the studio, and Adam Mugarba also joins us, uh, you know, from our off-site studio. Let me start with you, uh, Cairo Jobo. I mean, you, you listened uh, to the uh, INEC, uh, you know, official there, uh, Mr. Koye. He says, look, it, it looks like INEC really is trying to uh, help the APC you know, avoid a situation where loopholes will be taken advantage of that could mar the March uh, 26 uh, convention. W what are your thoughts on this? How would you respond to some of the issues he's raised? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, uh, first of all, good evening, and uh, thanks for having me. Um, the issue INEC has raised about uh, the letter that they have uh, issues with is like... Uh, the issue of a referee in a, a football match. There are 50-50 situations. And uh, if you have the bedside manner of a medical doctor, the leader of the football uh, team that behaves better wins. So an INEC is not supposed to cause problem or side any, uh, uh, side any of the parties. And in any case, Buni has not written to INEC to say they should not honor the meeting. First, I, let me thank INEC for saying that the 26th March date for the convention is sacrosanct. Now, the letter to INEC did not specify that there is going to be a change of guard. So if you read section, uh, if you don't mind, yes. if, if you read section, section 82 of the Electoral Act, it says, the Electoral Act requires political parties to notify INEC when it intends to hold any Congress, convention, conference, or meeting for the purpose of merger, electing members of the executive committees, other governing bodies of the political party, and nomination of candidates. It never said, the letter didn't inform INEC that there's going to be a change of guard or there's going to be an election at that meeting. So what is surprising people is, why would INEC jump the gun? And should that happen in any case, INEC also, as the father of all political parties, it will not say, come, my son, what you have done is not right. Can we remedy it? So these are the situations. You see, the fault actually is not very much with INEC. It's with my party. The problem with my party is that a lot of the governors, a lot of the leaders, uh, Malabuni deceived almost everybody. So he will dance with you, agree with you, dance with you, agree with this one, agree with this one. So everybody, okay. he has particular deals with everybody in pockets. All but right. meanwhile, it's only him that knows where he's going. All right. So that aside, please let me finish. This is very important okay. so that we can resolve very what is going on. Because we, yeah. we were working with time. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Please don't be offended. So the issue is that for my party to come out of this, I advise and I plead with the governors, with the leaders, everybody should take a step back. Everybody, forget your personal ambition because one percent of hundred is one. Zero percent of hundred is zero. If the president said it, he said, "Look, if care is not taken, the PDP, the opposition party will take over." Mm. And this is the time that we must put our hands on order. All right. Order. So uh, let me bring in Garba into this mm. conversation. Uh, it looks like your party is going through an organized chaos, although we haven't seen the end of it yet. What is your take on what has unfolded so far? 
Yeah, the truth of the matter is, uh, I think um, there has been a lot of uh, emotional tantrum about the issues of the party. You know, attacking a personality of my Malabuni, you know, comparable to the law and guidelines that establish the operating procedure of a party. I am happy that um, the director of water education of INEC was able to clear it clearly that there is a violation of procedure. The letter that was sent to INEC does not contain the genuine chairman of the party and his secretary. And at the same time, it was also very clear by the press conference delivered um, under, uh, by, by the party spokesman that my Malabuni still remains the substantive chairman. So when he come back tomorrow, he will still continue to be the chairman of the party. Caretaker is extraordinary convention committee leader because that's what is constitutionally recognized by the NEC and by the INEC. So the issue is most of the attacks and the coup d'etat that we nearly saw, you know, in the party um, in the last few days was simply because there is an attack on that personality of my Malabuni as opposed to establish procedure and law. If you look at what, uh, uh, what Dr. Cairo said about the seed of my Mala and all those kind of things, it was just personal attack. An ambition, for God's sake, is not a crime. If somebody says he has an ambition, then it shouldn't be allowed because that's a personal interest. But issue of carrying somebody's ambition, then trying to smear that person simply because of his personal ambition does not portray an organized institution. And that is very unlike APC. And that is why, if you notice even from the speech of the INEC uh, Director of Voter Education, he said that there has been proper, regular, and conforming communication between APC and the INEC. Suddenly, we just have some parallel uh, leadership of the party that came on board and hijacked the entire process and tried to nearly tarnish the image of the party. But we're very lucky that everything is now sorted and everybody is becoming aligned that if tomorrow my Malabuni is back into this country, he is going to take over his role as the chairman of the CECPC and continue to steer the party to its planned 26 March 2022 national convention. I think that has been very clear. And with this, it's a very good thing, but we should be able to learn to separate the differences between the personality of my Mala and whatever ambition that is assumed he is having. Because he didn't voice it out, it was just assumed, it was speculated he has certain ambition. And also the established laws and procedure. We have to pay attention to the law in, for us not to go and fell into trouble as we face 2023 election. Because we have seen how we've been losing elections in so many, we may win election and suddenly the court will come and revise the whole process simply because of these kind of challenges. So Wait, we have let's, to work uh, hard to ensure that we conform to the law so that we do the right thing and also emerge victorious in 2023 election. Uh, absolutely. Uh, let me take it back to uh, Mr. Festus Okoye, uh, Director of Voter Education, INEC. I mean, you heard uh, Mr. Ojubo there say that uh, INEC is more or less interfering in the internal affairs of the APC, had no business actually, uh, you know, sending that letter, uh, drawing their attention to the issue of, uh, you know, timing, uh, before the March 26 convention. Uh, what, how much window really does uh, APC have uh, in the event that uh, May Malabuni returns tomorrow? Will he still be the chairman of the APC? Will INEC recognize that? Well, uh, uh, I think that um, uh, all the 18 registered political parties in Nigeria uh, must realize that the Independent National Electoral Commission is the regulator of political parties and political parties cannot regulate the commission. Now, all the registered political parties are aware of the processes and procedures of the commission and they are aware that in their communications to the Independent National Electoral Commission, that those communications must be signed by the national chairman and must also be signed by the national secretary. All of them are aware and they have been complying. Uh, so this period uh, cannot be uh, an, an exception. Now, the political party is also aware that the moment there's a change in leadership in terms of having an acting chairman or having an acting secretary, that that must be communicated to the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, so that the commission will be aware that there has been a change. As of today, there is no formal notification uh, to the Independent National Electoral Commission relating uh, to the national chairman of the party proceeding on vacation or the national secretary uh, not being available. The letter we received did not have the signature of the national chairman, did not have the signature of the national secretary. And we wrote back to the, um, 
to the party saying, look, the letter you wrote did not have these necessary and fundamental requirements. Note and comply. And they, we are still waiting for them to comply. So if they comply, uh, we'll go and monitor the, uh, the, the, the said meeting. If they do not comply, definitely the Independent National Electoral Commission will not monitor the said next meeting. And then, um, Mr. Cairo, I mean, let me bring you back. You heard Adamu Garba say a parallel leadership. We had the governor of Ondo State, Akarodolu, talk about Yahoo Yahoo governors. I don't know what that means, but he says, you know, there are people who um, have intentions to derail the party. Uh, so your party is standing against itself uh, and not so much of INEC here. Well, um, like as I explained to you earlier, the, the issue, uh, as far as this party is concerned, is that there must be honesty and sincerity in leadership. Once you lack it, a lot of things are bound to go wrong, just like what has just happened now in the party. So now, what is the way forward? That is what we have been saying before. Look, see, Malaboni has lost the confidence of majority of the party. And uh, once you lose in a political party of this nature, once you lose the required confidence of your people, the, only, the obvious thing to do, you respect yourself. And then you say, look, you take a back seat. It's not your property. Your ambition cannot kill the party. If you allow your ambition to kill the party, then everybody goes down. I mark you, if you listen to what Erufai said, Erufai said, look, there are specific instructions. And these specific instructions, what Mala Buni should do is to respect it. Uh, because there is no counter uh, uh, in instruction from what uh, uh, Erufai has said. So anybody can jump to the TV to the defense of Mala Buni and then start saying what he likes to say. But look, there must be order. There must be respect for due process. And that due process means that Mala Buni right now should step down honorably, should take a step back so that his interests will not kill the party. Ask him to step back, but that's the, the leadership that INEC has just said they recognize. Mm -hmm. The issue, that's what I'm trying to explain to you. INEC is not in a position to, to make any categorical statement on this issue. Because until the meeting that is proposed to hold on uh, Thursday uh, holds, first of all, why is INEC jumping the gun? That's what we are saying. Yeah, but INEC, INEC is expected to be at that uh, neck if, uh, if the, due the, yeah. process is followed. But let me bring then in... If INEC, if INEC attends the, the, the session, yeah. then it is at that point that INEC will say, look, this is something wrong with this session. So, and in any case, that is... Uh, the important thing is that INEC recognizes the, 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 the 26th March uh, convention. That is sacrosanct. That's what the party members are concerned about. Okay. Yes. All right. Let me bring in uh, Adamu Garba again. Well, uh, I mean, uh, Tinubu cautions, uh, you know, the party, the APC, on internal democracy. And Matawale only recently also said, look, there's no need for the APC to wash her dirty linen in public. And only recently, you yourself uh, said there's a need to, you know, clear all outstanding issues before any convention. Do you still stand by that? And what are the chances of those uh, issues being resolved before March uh, 26? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, I think um, so far, since all the procedure have been respected, and INEC was very categorical about these statements, and every other member of the party is very categorical, except those that are willingly choosing to be rebellious, it was established that this is how the party should operate. I think... Uh, we can go to March 26th uh, convention properly if we really obey the law. You know, it's, it's, not, it's not a problem. But uh, my respected elder statement, Dr. Cairo, has been very emotive, you know, so, to some extent on this particular issue. Now, if my mala is the problem and we have few days to the 26th convention, what is wrong in allowing the convention to be superheaded by him and then later handed over to the new chairman. What is wrong with that? Why do you want to remove someone because of your personal speculative assumption about that person? Why do you want to remove him within a few days to convention, trying to create a lot of confusion? To the best of my knowledge, I think these people that think they're trying to protect the party are actually doing more harm, more damage to the party, and even somewhat look, doing some action that might likely even lead to the postponement of this convention. Because should we have any procedural violation again, 
And then we read a point whereby we are given, we, we did not comply with 21 days notification that we are supposed to be given to the INEC. We are going to jump into another month and perhaps another month. And it's the same people that are struggling to save the party that are causing the problem. So the best solution is we have established party, we have established leadership, we should obey, align, organize ourselves, go to convention, do successfully, hand over to the new NWC, and then move ahead. Let everybody go and practice his ambition. But the situation where we're trying to turn as personality of my mala, as opposed to the institution of party, then it has been too emotional. And we should really well, grow above that as the largest party in Africa. Mm. The APC. But uh, Mr. Festus, okay, I'll let you have the last word on this conversation. What's the way forward for the ruling party in Nigeria? A lot of people are interested in this because it's the ruling party and democracy mm -hmm. is here at stake. Well, uh, as far as the Independent National Electoral Commission is concerned, uh, the 18 registered political parties in Nigeria are of equal status and they have the same incidence of registration. Uh, so all we are saying as, a as a, an a electoral management body is that all registered political parties have a constitutional and legal obligation to comply with the provisions of the Constitution, comply with the provisions of the Electoral Act 2022, comply with the regulations, guidelines, and manuals of the Commission relating to political party activities. And if they do this and respect the internal party dynamics in their political parties, there won't be any problem with the Independent National Electoral Commission. But we will continue to regulate them. No political party can pretend that it wants to regulate the Independent National Electoral Commission. We are the regulator of political parties, and we set the stage and set the parameters uh, for some of the things they do. Thank you so much. Uh, INEC, National Electoral Commissioner for Information and Voter Education, Festus Okoye, for being on the show. Let me also thank Dr. Cairo Jubo and Garba Adamu, who are members of the ruling of Progressive Congress, for being on Newsnight tonight. We do appreciate your time. I wish you the best with your party.